some parts in from um, other CAD systems, such as um, DXF files. The software uses quite a few points um, to define the shape, and those are not required. You don't need so many points. So one of the functions I like to do is to go in and use the modify points function. And that's going to automatically reduce those number of parts. Um, and you can adjust. There is a, a value over here, a reduce factor. And you can play with that number to um, allow more points to stay or fewer points to stay. Outside of the line here is the cut line, and that uh, interior line that's displaying as dashed is actually the sew line, um, and that came over in my cut file, uh, excuse me, in my DXF file. So let's say that I want to add some notches. I'm going to go up into my Create menu. And I'm going to select Create Standard Notch. And it, my user input window is asking me to indicate the notch position. So I'm going to um, click on the Value button. And this gives me the opportunity to either measure from the beginning of the line, and that's in a clockwise direction, or by clicking the End field over here in the User Input box. It'll measure from the bottom of my piece or from the end of the line. So in this case, I'll just measure from the top of my piece, and I'm going to enter 3. I'm going to do the same amount here. Those notches on my piece, that just shows you how you can measure and apply notches. So next thing I want to think about is how these parts are going to be oriented in my marker. So that's going to be determining which way the grain um, will be lying for the pieces and which direction I want them to come in uh, in the marker. So I would like to rotate all of my parts so this curved, wide curved end is pointing to the right, or in the east, pointing east. So what I'm going to do is I am going to rotate some of these parts. And um, I'm going to rotate this piece 90 degrees clockwise. I'm going to rotate this piece in a have to click OK between each one, so and then you can choose a different value. And you have to remember to click out of that function, or else you'll rotate it more than once, like I did a few seconds ago. OK, so now I have my parts oriented the way that I want to uh, have them in my marker. And you'll notice that um, the grain lines look a little different. Um, this, this arrow um, is the orientation symbol in the Accumark. And so what I want to do now is, in order to finalize the orientation of these parts, I must realign the grain. I want to remove these lines I don't need. Um, it looks like there was a line underneath some of those. And um, I have two lines right on top of each other, and so it's giving me an error that um, I can't select a grain line. I actually clicked on the wrong line there. And so as I'm, I'm rolling my mouse, trying to highlight these lines, I have my mouse button down. And you can see line type I, that's what I want. And I'll just release it and delete that line. And it looks like I have um, green lines that probably came over uh, with the DXF file, but the Accumark puts its own green line in. Now, um, 
I just want to save my parts. Um, so I'm going to go up here to File, Save, and um, click on my pieces. And they're saved. And um, right now, the pieces are just, you know, named um, by numbers uh, because the software named them automatically. You can change the name if you want by simply going into Edit uh, Piece Info. Here, it was a right mouse button. Click and then um, Edit Piece Info. And you can actually change the piece names here. You can also change the piece name in the model file. Here, you'll see each part listed. And um, here in the model, you're going to be determining how many of each part you need. Um, in this case, they're all symmetrical. So I really only needed one. And I could have just put a quantity of four here in this column um, over here on where it says flips. But be because I had all the parts in, um, I chose to just work with all of the pieces um, independently. So in this column, the first column is for the piece name. Second is a, a thumbnail of what the part looks like. I'm going to have something called a piece category piece category, which is a, a tool that's used um, in the software for kind of grouping generic types of parts together, and a field for a description. And here is where I'm going to define just a fabric that I'm going to use. So this is used if you're going to have different materials in a product. Maybe you have an outside layer of, of fabric and maybe an internal layer of some kind of non-woven. Uh, if it's the same exact shape as the part that's listed here, you can simply um, just list a different fabric name here. And when it comes time for the marker, you can um, request the fabric name, and the software will pick the parts that are used in that particular fabric name. Now, to rename the pieces, I'm going to right mouse button over the piece name field. And you'll see uh, this rename mode pop up. And you want to check that. And then your column is going to say rename mode piece name. And so um, this allows me to rename my parts. Now the benefit of doing it here is uh, I get to edit the model that was created in the uh, conversion and um, the part names at one time. Okay, and then I'm just going to save. And what's going to happen is when I save, it's confirming that I, these were the original names here on the left, and I've changed the names to these names here on the right. So it's going to say yes, and uh, I will close out of this menu. And then we're going to create a marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this with uh, something called Easy Order. And in Easy Order, I'm going to be indicating the width of the material and the quantities, the total number of parts you want in the marker. I'm just going to lay out um, to the Easy Order basic layout. It's just a little more simple easier to walk you through. So because I um, selected my model name in Explorer and used my right mouse button and said open with easy order, um, the model shows up in this field automatically selected. So um, here's where I'm going to indicate quantities and every part in the Accumark is assigned a size. 
so um, in this case, let's say I just want four. And I go to the next page, which is um, piece constraints. And this is going to be basically whether I want to be able to rotate the parts in marker making for better fabric utilization. And in this case, let's say I'm, I'm going to allow 180 degree rotation. This is good if you have a plain material that doesn't have any uh, nap or direction to it. And then once you select one, Okay, next uh, is my fabric. So if you recall, I set up a fabric type of S and um, I just need to indicate the material width. So let's say it's 140 centimeters. And um, then I have a spread type. So this is whether it's a face up or face down, I come back to the main page and I'm going to click on process marker. And uh, you can see here it's showing me what the name of the marker is going to be. It gives me um, a success. I can look at the bottom of the page here. It's going to give me my fabric width. and. Here it's going to give me a total length for my pieces. And here what I'm going to do is place my parts in, and in this case I'm going to rotate 180 degrees as I place them in. And um, as you see, all of these are labeled a, that's the first size, because I ordered um, multiple quantities. You'll see the first group of that part is labeled A, the second group will be B. And those, you can choose to have those printed in your marker, just so you can keep track. So you would just go ahead and slide those pieces in the way you want them. Maybe slide a couple of these in. And that's your manual marker making. Now, once you get the parts in that you want, you're going to save the marker. And we're going to just go ahead and create um, a cut file from this. So I use um, Generate Cut Data from my menu, and um, so most of these fields are I identified or selected already, and um, there's a parameter table here that is used to define my cutting parameters for the automatic cutting machine that you're using. So that's that. And I'm going to just process. And then I get my status that it's processed and exported. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, folder in Windows and I should see that file right here, marker1-s.nc, and that is the cut file. Now, what I usually do when I create those cut files is I also um, save the file to the storage area, and that allows you to keep a, a record of any cut files that you have exported um, to send off to the cut room if there's any issues after the fact, after it leaves um, the marker making department, uh, you can always refer back to the image, um, the cut data 
that's stored in your storage area inside uh, of a line. Um, and you can control that in PDS by doing what's called merging, merging lines. Uh, but in this case, that wasn't necessary. So that looks good. And that is our process flow from importing a DXF file into PDS, saving out the parts, adding some notches, uh, reducing the points, a couple other things to clean it up, and then uh, generating a marker, and then finally a cut file.